What's up everyone? If you have not seen the prior videos in the series, I highly suggest going back and watching them. Welcome to the last part of the series. Here we will be talking about the final structure of the PSR. This is essentially the final report on you. After the probation officer has completed his investigation, he'll write a report that adheres to a template. Some points of the template are as follows. Part A, the offense. This section provides information necessary to understand the offense, assets, its impact on any victim, and calculate the offense level the judge may use when imposing a sentence. It also offers information about the elements of the offense that the readers may want to consider. Charges. A brief clinical overview of the charges. This is objective information, a snapshot of the past that the defendant cannot influence. Co-defendants. Descriptions of anyone else charged in the same document. This information can influence the defendant as the Bureau of Prison officials may choose to separate the co-defendants from serving time in the same facility. Before going into the system, learn the implications from this report area. It could lead to the individual serving a sentence in prison thousands of miles away from their family. Related cases. Descriptions of any other case that may be connected to the defendant's case. If other cases are involved, the defendant may want to work with counsel to prepare a statement or explanation. The offense conduct is the assessment of the defendant's crime. The probation officer uses this section to report what happened in the offense. He bases this narrative on what the pre-sentence investigation revealed. So it doesn't necessarily reflect the same information in a plea agreement or what took place during the trial. Many probation officers will rely upon what others alleged rather than proved. Pay particular close attention to this section to ensure its accuracy. This section can have lasting ramifications and enormous implications, including the sentencing enhancement to extend the sentence. If the probation officer alleges leadership in this area, prison officials will consider that information when assessing whether an individual is suitable for a minimum security placement. Also, it will be considered in the CARES Act and First Step Act credits. Obstruction of justice. Descriptions of any effort to impede the investigation. Probation officers can allege obstruction of justice for any type of misstatement. Accordingly, defendants must speak deliberately, measuring their words precisely when participating in pre-sentence investigations. A defendant doesn't have to say anything to the probation officer. If the defendant chooses to elaborate, the defendant should ensure that the probation officer doesn't perceive him as deceitful or manipulative. Such accusations can lead to the sentencing enhancement for obstructing of justice. Acceptance of responsibility. A favorable factor that would lead to a downward adjustment in the sentencing range. Some factors that can lead to this favorable adjustment mechanism include payment of restitution, timeliness of the defendant's admission of guilt, statements of remorse, engagement during the pre-sentence investigation, and document efforts at post-arrest rehabilitation. Offense level computations. Mathematical formulas that determine the sentence guideline range. Determined by the United States Sentencing Guidelines, this is the section where the probation officer applies a combination of his findings from the investigation and the sentencing range that the federal sentencing guidelines recommend. On occasion, the probation officer arrives at a sentence that differs from the range agreed upon by the prosecution and the defense. The sentencing judge makes the final decision. Offense behavior not part of relevant conduct. Potentially damaging area of the report. Sometimes the parties agree to dismiss specific counts to secure a guilty plea, but the probation officer may discuss those dismissed counts in this area, even though there was no finding of guilt. Unfortunately, the Bureau of Prisons may rely upon this section when classifying an individual. Pay close attention to this area. 
take every effort to ensure that the descriptions do not accuse the defendant in ways that can be used potentially later to compromise his sentence. Part B. Defendant's Criminal History. This section provides historical data to influence how the Bureau of Prisons officially classifies an offender. This entire section may or may not influence the judge at sentencing, but prison officials scrutinize it closely when they classify an offender. The information it contains may influence critical factors, including whether the individual qualifies for programs that can reduce the sentence, the security level where an individual will serve his sentence, the access an individual will have to opportunities in prison, the types of programs that prison officials will mandate for the individual, the types of jobs where prison officials will force the individual to work, the amount of time an individual may have access to the telephone, the amount of time an individual may have access to visiting, the prison located where an individual will serve his sentence, the amount of money an individual may spend in commissary, the amount of money an individual may have to pay towards financial sanctions while in custody, the possibility of being sentenced to a cost of incarceration fee, meaning that he would have to pay thousands each month toward the cost of his own confinement. I really hope this video series has opened your eyes to the importance of the PSR and the PSI. They can literally add years to your sentence. So if you stuck around and watched it and got something out of it, then I hope that benefits you and if you're facing these challenges. Attorneys who lack experience with the Bureau of Prisons fail to appreciate the magnitude of these documents' influence on an individual's journey through the prison system. If you'd like more personalized guidance, feel free to contact us on our site, doingfedtime.com. If you're working with an attorney, preparing you to understand the relationship between your answers to all of the questions above, you should be well prepared for the best possible outcome for the pre-sentence investigation. If not, we encourage you to make sure that you prepare yourself independently or to work with a consultant who's qualified to be able to guide you through the process. In any case, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. Keep learning, growing, and staying safe.